as a summary of the uh, band gap reference. So we designed the CTAT that is a constant current passing through a diode will give us the CTAT voltage and the slope we got it as 1 minus 1.6 millivolt per degree centigrade. Before uh, going to the PTAT design, uh, let us we can simulate this in cadence. We will pass a constant current through a diode and we, we will plot the voltage across the diode. This voltage we will plot and we can see it is a PTAT, it is a CTAT voltage. So before going to cadence and uh, doing the simulation, uh, we should know how the diode is manufactured in CMOS process. How to make diode? Diode symbol is this and essentially it is a, it's a PN junction device. And in our CTAT what we need? Uh, we need to pass a constant current through the diode. So this is the P, this is the N. So now let us discuss how we will manufacture this in standard CMOS process. So in standard CMOS process, we know we have a P substrate. So every device is made on this P substrate and uh, if we make a N plus implant then you get a PN junction. So this is a simple diode in the CMOS process. See you, you have a diode here like this. So what is the problem with this implementation? Uh, first of all, uh, the issue is the P substrate is always connected to ground. In a CMOS process, the P substrate is always connected to ground. So the diode what we formed here will be of this kind. With the P substrate connected to ground. But this is not what we want. We need n, n part to be grounded and we, we should able to connect the P, P terminal that is anode to some, somewhere else to the current source. But here we, we cannot do that because uh, in a CMOS process the P substrate is always grounded. So we cannot connect this, this P is not free, free to connect somewhere. So it is always connected to ground. So this implementation is not possible for us. So what we can do next? So we have P substrate here. It is the P substrate, and uh, in the P substrate we can make an N well. This is the N well, and in the end again we can make P plus implant. to make a PN junction. Now we made a PN junction here. So we can take the connection of anode here and the N connection we can take using a N plus implant. This N N plus implant it is used for connection only. So now we have a diode here and it, we, it is free to connect anywhere because the anode is free, it is not the substrate, the substrate is always connected to ground, but this anode, this P plus is free to connect anywhere. So we can uh, make the uh, device like this. But there is one problem, see if you look, if you see the structure, the structure what we have is a P substrate, then we have an N, N well is there. 
then again we have a P. So this will form a PNP transistor, uh, PNP transistor that is it will form a BJD. If we make a device like this, this is the P substrate and uh, then I made a N well here. Again I made a P substrate. Our intention is to create a PN junction so that we can this use this diode for our CTAT voltage to generate our CTAT voltage. But uh, when I made this essentially what formed is a PNP structure. It is not just a PN structure. This is a PNP structure. Uh, this is essentially a parasitic BJD. So we will end up, we will get a device like this. Where this is your N, this is your base and uh, you have one P here, this P is this P and another P is the substrate and it is grounded. So the diode which you, you are trying to make is between this P and this N. So whenever there is a current flow through this P N, that means for this BJT that is a base current. Suppose there is a small current through this PN. Uh, our intention is to make the current flow through this way. So this is our PN junction. But if we have a small base current, there will it will create a large collector emitter current. That is a theory of, that is a property of BJT. We know that for a BJT if there is a small base current, a lot of collector current will flow. So instead of uh, current flowing through this direction, all of our current will flow through this direction to the substrate. A lot of current will flow from this P to the substrate. And only a smart, uh, a small part will go to uh, to the base. So this is not a recommended situation uh, where a lot of current is flowing to the substrate is not advisable because it will create a lot of noise and the substrate current and will create a lot of substrate noise and it will affect the other circuit also because this P substrate is common to all. In this P substrate there will be another MOSFET and those other devices will be there. If extra current is injected to the P substrate it will affect other circuit also. So this is also uh, not a advisable uh, situation. So I repeat we, we started with a PN junction and finally we end up with a parasitic BJT. So we cannot avoid this. Uh, BJT. Then how we will uh, make a, a diode in the uh, CMOS process. So here is the option. So in CMOS process the diode is uh, implemented like uh, this. Suppose we have the P substrate here. This is the P substrate and uh, I will make a P plus here and uh, N plus here and this is placed in the N well. Covering this N well, I will have another P plus layer. So what is the advantage of this uh, arrangement? Here we have one connection here. Uh, this is the anode of our diode and uh, we have another connection here. If you consider the BJT, 
so this I am calling terminal A so this is the terminal A this is assume it is the this is this is again the P this P substrate is this so this is anywhere connected to ground and you remember our circuit is to connect the diode like this so in the circuit itself it is saying we need to connect the end portion to the ground so if we connect this end portion to the ground we have lot of advantages first of all if the connect if the n well and the p substrate are in the same potential when that is both are connected to ground and we explained in the last slide that is a lot of current will flow through this through this pnp uh, from emitter to the collector and the issue was this extra this excess current will generate problem it will interfere with the other circuit and the substrate current will form so we have in this structure we have another p, p plus region it is also connected connected to ground so whatever the current which is flowing from the p p plus to the substrate before reaching to the substrate it is co collected by the p plus and it is connected to the ground and we will have current flow through this also this also grounded so there is no substrate current the current which was flowing to the substrate we made a p plus region to collect that current and we pass to the ground suppose we have another mosfet or something like this it is not affected these currents will not affect here but if suppose we don't have this p plus region then all this current is common to the p substrate it can flow anywhere in the p substrate okay now uh, this type of structure is used to make a, a bjt or a diode uh, in in the cmos process so we started with making a diode and finally we end up with this structure so this diode we can replace with this pnp uh, transistor so whenever uh, you see a diode like this finally you will end up with a transistor because you cannot avoid forming of this pnp junction uh, in the cmos process so we will be using this pnp structure to validate our uh, our derivation for the to validate our zeta structure we discussed about the zeta in very detail and we said uh, when a constant current is passed through a diode then the voltage across the diode is a zeta and then we discussed how a diode is implemented in cmos process and we said uh, if we start with diode if we start with making diode we will finally end up with a, a bjt so uh, for the simulation purpose we are using a bjt and uh, as we discussed in the theory session the base is grounded collector is also grounded the p substrate is also grounded so we can connect them to ground and in the emitter i am injecting a constant current this is the ideal current source in cadence So the how much current we should pass we, we can pass uh, a, any amount of current any amount means not too much but we should ensure that all the mosfets in saturation when we making when we make how much current is flowing through the uh, transistor for example uh, let us uh, let us pump 5 micro ampere of current through the bjt and we are interested in this voltage and the supply voltage i am using 3.3 volt launch ade i want to sweep the temperature so i am selecting the dc analysis 
save DC operating point temperature I want to sweep from minus 40 to 125 press ok and uh, let's label this uh, node as CTAT voltage that is CTAT save and uh, output to be plotted I need CTAT to be plotted run the simulation see this is the curve in the x axis we have temperature and in the y axis we have the voltage across the diode so you can clearly see that uh, when the temperature increases from minus 40 to 125 degree uh, the voltage across the diode is steadily decreasing so this is this nature is called CTAT that is complement complementary to uh, absolute temperature when the temperature increases voltage decreases so we got the CTAT curve and uh, in the discussion we we found the slope of the CTAT curve also and after deriving we got uh, the slope nearly to 1.8 and in some textbook it is mentioned as 1.6 so that depend on the temperature and uh, the current passing through the uh, BJT and the voltage across the diode and those things so let us find how much we are getting uh, in our simulation for that select uh, the curve then go to the uh, calculator so our calculator is here and we selected this voltage is already here then we go to the derivative and uh, evaluate the derivative so we did the dou, dou VD by dou T here we found the derivative of this curve that is appeared in the blue color here so if we wish we can change the color to something this okay this blue color is the derivative so here you can see the derivative in this axis in the right side you can see the derivative uh, it is where it is changing from 1.75 to 2 so uh, in the equation itself we we saw that the slope is dependent on the temperature so that you can see here and uh, theoretically it is it is, should be near to 1.6 uh, but uh, it is not a fixed value and uh, now we are getting near to uh, in minus 40 degree we are getting near to 1.75 as the temperature increases uh, we are getting lesser a uh, higher value like 2.5 uh, 2.05 is the slope what we are getting so uh, this is the simulation for the CTAT in this simulation we found that the we, we simulated the CTAT voltage and we found the curve that is the temperature as the temperature increases the voltage across the BJT is decreasing and we found the slope also uh, by this simulation the discussion about the CTAT is over now we can go to PTAT and uh, discuss the design of PTAT and the theory behind that.